You're listening to Carolina Catholic Radio, Charlotte, 1270 AM. Coming to you from our Charlotte studios. Also streaming at carolinacatholicmedia.org and on the Carolina Catholic mobile app. It's Faith and Sport coming to you with a brand new broadcast today. I'm Chris, the producer, and as always, your host for Faith and Sport, the one, the only, the incomparable, you know him as Dr. John Aquaviva. Hey folks, welcome to the show wherever, whenever, however you are joining us. We're just glad that you're with us today. Uh, faith and Sport, this is where we apply our faith to all aspects of sport. So whether you are a referee, an administrator, an athlete, a parent, grandparent of the athlete, this is the show for you because we tie in ethics and character, morality into the world of sports. So it's a regular sports show. Just buckle yourself into the fact that there's going to be some Catholicism, some ethics and morality. Uh, here's what we're going to do today. Talk today's sports topics, including our hit or miss with Jason Murphy. You know his name. He's been on the show before. He hosts The Obligation, does a bunch of other stuff for the diocese. He's going to join us in one minute. Our guest is Paula Umana. She is a former world-ranked professional tennis player, author of 40 Gifts of Life. She's going to join us in the second half of the show. We have our stat of the day. Chris, we're going to do something different, brother. Okay. We are going to do parts one and parts two, if we have time, of Stat of the Day. Normally, we've just done part one, so the audience out there is probably sweating with anticipation. What? There's yeah. two parts to this? And the answer is yes, folks. So buckle yourself in. A fifth no, in sport cliffhanger. And, and no caffeine, because otherwise <laughs> your heart won't be able to take it. Uh, just either way, uh, we're going to have a good time today. And then at, at the end, we're going to do a quick Q&A with Dr. Ray. And as uh, my student always uh, has told me, you can't rhyme in that same sentence with the same letter, but uh, we'll dismiss that. Uh, brother, how you doing? Uh, happy Easter. I, I want to say, no, no, we've had Easter since you, you and I last yeah, talked, that's but right. the Easter season's going all right for you. Everything good? Yes, and uh, my Braves are doing well. I know I, they are. I was kind of worried about them there when they were uh, playing their last series, and uh, but they seem, they seem to be coming back. They're going to be fine. Two of their games with the Mets got rained out. They're trying to play their uh, next Double game. Double header today, right? Get it in, yeah. This, the guy to watch out for, not just on the Braves, but in the whole National League, is a guy by the name of Strider. Yeah. That guy is terrific. Yes, he is. And, uh, and he happens to be an Atlanta Brave. And he happens to be Atlanta Brave. Anyway, brother, good to see you. Listen, good let's get started you. with our show. We're going to do our hit and miss, and we're going to start the whole conversation off uh, with talking with our old friend, uh, Jason Murphy. Jason, welcome to the show, buddy. How you doing? Hey, Dr. John. Doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. I, I like, just kind of like, you know, Lent. I'm in, uh, in, in the, um, the way that we celebrate Lent and the way that we celebrate the Triduum, that Easter is a, not just a day, but it's a season. That's right. And I love the fact that that is always surrounding uh, the, the readings at church. It's always surrounding the discussion in the homily and so forth. And this is the best time of year. I, I think this is terrific. I I. I struggle through Lent like most people because I give some things up. I do some other things, but it's a good struggle. And uh, I, my guess is you're the same, that it's good that it's over. The fight has been won right. by our Lord, but there's more work to be done, isn't there, brother? Yeah, we get to sit on the mountaintop for a little bit. You know? <laughs> and then what happens after that? Man, got to go down. No pitching tents around here. Gotta brother, down tell, the mountain. tell the audience, both in Carolina Catholic Radio Land and Radio Maria Land, what you are starting, this program you are starting— it is it for all men, all Catholic men, for – who's this for? Tell us the name of it and what you're doing. This is for the greater glory of God. I love it. That's right. Yeah. Right, so and what is it called? It's called the Martyr's Walk. And you created this, isn't it? Didn't you? Uh, you invented I am, it. I am God's tool. Okay. I'm just a stubborn, ignorant tool that's being used <laughs> I don't know, for, brother. for something here. If you were I'm not stubborn. Sure. No, no. If you were stubborn, you'd be at Dunkin' Donuts right now eating a stack full of donuts, yeah, but instead yeah. you're doing God's work. <laughs> Tell us about this program so, in a, in a yeah, couple yeah, sure, seconds. Sure, though. sure. Cool. The Martyr's Walk, uh, it's a Catholic slash you know, Christian boot camp, if, if you will. Uh, a combination of Ignatian Retreat versus Special Forces Boot Camp. Kind of <laughs> smack together. If you can get your head around that, we're going to push men uh, to their extremes, physically, spiritually, mentally. Yes. Uh, let them know that there's more in the tank. Let them know that, uh, you know that they've been holding back. Let them know that there's more out there and God is calling them to more. So we're going to help facilitate that. Is through, through a lot of uh, grueling uh, ex mental, physical, spiritual exercises. And you, this came to you how? How did you kind of come up? Was, was it taken off of a page of Exodus 90 playbook? or? 
you're familiar with kind that, of a culmination. Yeah, I've done the Exodus ninety. I've, I've been how many there. times? Yeah, uh, one time. I okay. did that one time. And I've that, done. And that was plenty. That was that was tough. It was tough. <laughs> but okay. But this is. But it was spread tougher. out over ninety days. This is going to be three days of very very in, intense. Um, Intense intensity. intensity so, let's so in, in essence, it's going to be like fervent prayer where you're going to be physically still, and yep. then literally the next minute you're going to be running up a mountaintop trying to touch God's hand reaching out to you. Pretty like much. Up, up yeah. Mount Everest. Everything will be done with intentionality so that uh, each exercise is kind of coordinated with a spiritual exercise. Like so that. I'm not going to give any details on what we do there because you want to bring them in. It's going to be a, uh, a very, very, uh, it's going to be a surprise for even the guys that come in to be trained for it. And then, yep. of course, the guys in August when our first event is uh but you know there could be things and i'm just going to throw a random out there you know could be carrying your own 200 pound cross i'm just saying it, it's very possible it. so there's the physical side there's a the spiritual yeah. side uh there will be some mental side uh it came from the fact that i've been involved in men's ministries for years yeah. uh, of course you know the, the catholic men's conference at the carolinas sure. uh the knights of columbus and i've uh, i've been called i feel like god has called me to Dig my claws in a little bit deeper, or, or allow God to dig His claws a little bit deeper. That's one way through, to put it. Through my my uh, my cooperation with this, so uh, we're hoping that this is not just a one time event, not just a three day event. Uh, you know, a lot of guys I think they come to the men's conference or they show up to the Knights of Columbus meeting, they check it off their list, they go back to their comfortable, uh, complacent lives. Uh, we're all guilty of that, I myself included. But the cure to that is uh, is brotherhood. It's shared traumatic experience, which the military incorporates to uh, to build up men and, and yep. bring them together in a brotherhood. Yep. And uh, so much of that, and it's all going to revolve around um, martyrdom. And so we're going to use the Roman martyrology. So many of the trials and many of the uh, the lessons for the day will be based upon the lives of the martyrs. They'll hear those each day. So there'll be rosary each day. There'll be time for brotherhood. There may be stations at the cross each day. So it's going to sure. be the most difficult physical and uh, spiritual and mental things that you know they've, they've come to experience and we hope to you know have them leave ready to take the next step and, and listen to god's calling to be the men the fathers the husbands that we are called to be god bless you brother you and i talked about this for the first time i want to say the last time we chatted on the phone uh, a little more than a week ago is there anything at this point a website or a absolutely uh, there is okay yep. so and direct people to that so they can so, yeah. get an understanding can of definitely it find before. us uh, www.themarterswalk.com and they can also find us on Instagram and Facebook at The Martyrs Walk. Uh, I think you'll be Look very interested you. and uh, have some, some good information Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Good for you, brother. Yeah, sure. I'm going to pray for this. Um, in fact, uh, I can't imagine not being a part of it at some point. Oh, yeah. Like, we'll get you out there, Doc. I love sure. it. I love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Right, Chris, folks, too. Hey, yeah, there you go. This is not strictly Catholic. <laughs> That's gonna right. Be, no, no. It is going to okay. be for, for men that are, are seeking that, you know, it That's may right. not even be Christian. We're not going to try and convert anybody while they're there. Yeah. We're going to show them the truths uh, of, of, of our Catholic faith and how they have formed men for millennia. Yep. And, uh, and also the tools of the military and, and different exercises that have awesome. formed soldiers from, uh, for, for hundreds of years. So. That's right. That's right. Good for you. Uh, folks, if you're just joining us, you're listening to Faith in Sport here on Carolina Catholic Radio, a co-production of Radio Maria, Faith in Sport, where we look at sport through a Catholic lens. Joining me in studio today is the great Jason Murphy. Uh, as always, we start our conversation on Faith in Sport with a hit or miss of the week, something negative or positive that happened in the world of sport. Jason, as always, the guest goes first. Brother Witcher is a hit or a miss. So, Doc, I'm going to have a hit today, and, man, I was looking back in my, uh, in my, uh, my history banks here of, uh, of all my hits and misses, and I think more times than not, I'm talking about Alabama football, and I don't know <laughs> what that is. tell everybody why that's a big deal. Uh, born and bred, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, <laughs> no Tigers. Uh, you know, I'm an alumni, LSU, and... Uh, uh, and, and we, you know, we it is ingrained in us. You know, we just we just we're, just, we're not supposed to like Alabama. That's right. That's right. Uh, there you go. There's the uh, the, the, the spit there. Uh, you know, every time uh, I got to say that word. So, um, but, but regardless, more times, more times than not, I'm talking about Alabama football here. That's, that that must well, means deep down, maybe I love them. I no, don't know. No, it I, doesn't. I, it doesn't mean that. It does mean <laughs> that you respect their program. That's and right. Some very I good do. things have come out of there. I do. Uh, I, I've talked about Alabama football, in particular, Catholic yeah. Nick Saban. That's right. A few times. That's right. So tell us what your hit is. So uh, I've got uh, Bryce Young. Yes. So you know Bryce just recruited to the Carolina Panthers. That's right. You know, not so recruited, but drafted. Drafted. Yes. Yeah, let's, yeah. Drafted to the Carolina Panthers. Uh, great quarterback. Um, and and Bryce, you know, a great young man. He won the Heisman in 2021. Yeah, uh, was very thankful first and foremost to God and yeah. to his family. So it's 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 you know it's a beautiful thing to still see that because you don't see it very often these days, especially in the line of sports. 
uh, or men in general. You know, we're, you know, unfortunately in these, this day and age, we're kind of a little slow to acknowledge God before other men. But, yeah. but going back to even his Heisman, um, you know, he was very thankful. And, uh, you know, that night he said, God is great, truly grateful for everyone who made this possible and for all the support I've received, all glory to God. So that was, that was prior, obviously, to him coming to Carolina. But uh, recently, find, you know, when he found out that he was going to be coming to Carolina, um, he said, it's a dream come true. Uh, I'm blessed. I want to thank God for allowing me to be here for my parents and everyone who supported me. Um, although it's my name being called, there's so many people that, that pushed me and allowed me to be here. Um, and then finally, he says, uh, regardless of how someone else has views me, uh, whatever award, accolade, whatever someone might may say, negative, positive, I appreciate and I'm grateful for the positive and even for the negative, he said. Um, but at the end of the day, what motivates me is to what motivates me and pushes me is to model myself after the Lord. I definitely have a lot of work to do. So amen to that. You know, it's, it's, it's just a breath of fresh air, especially a young man, you know, being yep. in such a position. I mean, a young guy, I can't, what is he, 21, 22 years yep. old? At the most, 22. You know, leading, leading a, an NFL football team, uh, you know, just leading, leaving with the highest accolades from, from Alabama under, you know, th- one of the greatest coaches in history. That's right. And, uh, and it just, you know, so props to him. So there's my hit, uh, Bryce Young. Uh, That's outstanding. A question I have for you uh, outside of the faith-based aspect. Do you expect him to be above average, average, great, elite quarterback at the NFL level? Yeah. You know, he. I think the, the word on the street, everybody's kind of concerned about his size. Yeah, they you know, are. Very big, much big, so. Big part of, uh, part of that. And, uh you know he's going to be from from sitting at the the top of the heap to right. kind of all all part of the same big heap. That's right. Because he's playing against the best of the best every week. Um, you know we're going to see. You know we'll see if he rises to the occasion. I think he certainly has the ability. Your prediction though, because you you watch you're probably like me. You watch a whole lot more college football than you do NFL football. So you you got a chance to watch him That's firsthand. Right. He plays against LSU every year. Yep. But your prediction. He will be. I want to be positive, Doc. I'm trying to have a. I'm trying <laughs> it's, to have. It's okay a to be negative I, on I, this part of the show. I think potentially he's he's going to struggle a little bit with his size. I think he's he's going to be seeing a, a lot of reality. Yeah, uh, so when that too. when that D line comes at him, that he's prob- and they're going to be fast. Not only going to be That's much right. much bigger than him, they're, they're going to be much faster. Yeah, yeah, much faster than he experiences yeah. at the college level. Yeah. And there's no there's no. Uh, there's no uh, week week off, weeks off there. You know he's not going to be playing. Yeah. Uh, you know the, an, an ACC team or a or a, some other uh, conference team where That's he's right. getting a break. It's it's That's on right. every single oh, week. Yeah. Yep. You know? Yep. In the slowest guys uh, in the uh, in the NFL were some of the fastest guys at the college level. That's They're right. going to catch him from behind. Yep. They're going to catch him from the side. I love him. I want to see him succeed. Yep. Uh, I think it's terrific, like, why you had him as your hit. I mean, how do you not respect him like mm-hmm. the guy in cheer form at any level? Uh, everything about him is likable. I just don't think he's going to be very good. I think that in the depths of the heart of the analyst, this was not a very good quarterback year. Right. And I was kind of surprised the Carolina Panthers rushed themselves up to that first pick. They gave away a lot to do they that. Yeah. And to do that for somebody where there's a lot of questions, uh, I, I, I question that. But at some point, you got to try for your quarterback, and there's an upside to him, and he, that guy's a winner. Oh, yeah. And on top of it, how do you go wrong with a personality like That's that? That's right. He's great. He's going to be a feather in a lot of D-line's hats. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to be looking for him. There's going to be a lot oh, of yeah. hungry, hungry guys looking to, to make that first sack. I'm so glad he's very quick because this may be he'll, – he'll, <laughs> rather than getting crushed, he'll just be able to get away. Maybe they'll just get him by the That's ankles right. or something. Let's do this, folks. We ran out of time already in this first – uh, break. I'll come back and we'll do uh, my uh, hit or miss and we'll have more with Jason Murphy right after this. Thank you for joining us here on Faith in Sport. On January 31st, 2019, Carolina Catholic Media signed on Charlotte's first Catholic radio station, AM 1270 WCGC. By the grace of God, we celebrate the past four years and look forward to continuing our apostolic vision and mission to serve the Carolina Catholic community. We are evangelistic partners with our clergy, active parishioners, the fallen away, and the homebound. We are accessible to all Christians, agnostics, and atheists. With distribution of a wide array of content across seven media platforms, there truly is something for everyone. During these past four years, Carolina Catholic has expanded to seven media platforms that include radio, internet stream, mobile app, website, YouTube, social media, and e-newsletter. Nearly all local programs are available by podcast and video on demand. 
In the year ahead, we're committed to promote more local parish, school, and ministry events, more live broadcasts, and more valuable content that showcases our dynamic local Carolina Catholic community. Of all the Catholic radio stations in the U.S., Carolina Catholic is arguably a leader in locally produced programs. To continue our work, Carolina Catholic Media needs $15,000 in monthly funding to continue operations across our seven media platforms. We are 100% dependent on your generosity. If you love what we're doing, please join us with a monthly tithe or annual gift. We have partnership plans available for parishes, schools, and ministries. If you own a business, you can be a program sponsor on one or all of our platforms. You can do a live broadcast of a special event with promotion before and rebroadcast after. On behalf of everyone at Carolina Catholic Media, we thank you for your past support and look forward to you joining us with the resources the apostolate needs to continue to evangelize the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith across the Carolinas. May God bless you and your family abundantly. Faith and charity are key elements of life, but are they at the center of your retirement planning and life insurance decisions? Knights of Columbus, a trusted organization with a proud history of more than 140 years of helping its members, can help Catholic families with insurance and retirement planning solutions. Most importantly, we do this in a way that is compatible with Catholic teaching and the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Investment Guidelines. Today, we have expanded our offerings to include retirement annuities, long-term care insurance, and disability income insurance. Beyond the benefits of financial protection, members may take satisfaction in knowing that Knights of Columbus contributes to causes that align with Catholic moral teaching. Let your faith inspire your financial decisions. Terms and conditions apply. Learn more by calling field agent Bob Gordon at 516-551-7838. Folks, welcome back to Faith and Sport. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. You're listening to Carolina Catholic Radio. It's a co-production of Radio Maria. Faith and Sport, where we merge sport and virtue. Joining me in the studio today is Jason Murphy. You're going to hear from him as we go back and forth throughout the show. Host of the obligation. Host of the obligation. That's right. Uh, and Jason just uh, completed his or just talked about his uh, hit, and that is Bryce Young and not just being the first pick, but how he glorified God and glorifies God and everything he does. I am so impressed by that. That was a great hit. I have a hit too. Mine's about pro uh, sports as well. This is about the great player uh, from Africa via Greece that came to America to play in the NBA. His name is Giannis Adenta Kupo. And this guy is one of the best players year after year in the NBA. And for the second year in a row, Jason, uh, Giannis and the Milwaukee Bucks were one of the heavy favorites to go to and win the NBA championship. But the last two years, they not only exited uh, early, they exited really early. They exited at the end of the first series, which is a real disappointment to everybody. And Giannis, my man, put things in perspective in an interview immediately following the game. Now, now granted, uh, I want you guys to, as listeners, just frame what he's saying and maybe take a little bit of the vinegar that's in his voice because he just got done losing a very disappointing series. Uh, his Milwaukee Bucks did. And clearly he's disappointed, but let's hear how he puts it in perspective when he's in a press conference and somebody asks him a specific question. Hit it, Chris. Here's for you. Do you view this season as a failure? We, you asked me the same question last year, Eric. Okay. Uh, do you get do you get the promotion every year on your job? No, right? So every year you work is a failure. Yes or no? No. Every every year you work, you work towards something, towards a goal, right? Which is to get a promotion, to be able to uh, take care of your family, to be able, I don't know, um, provide the house for them or take care of your parents. You work towards a goal. It's not a failure. It's steps to success. You know, and if you've never, I don't know, I don't want to. I don't want to make it personal. So, there's always steps to it. You know, um, Michael Jordan played 15 years, won six championships. The other nine years was a failure. That's what you're telling me. 
I like that. We can listen to that whole thing. You could uh, go to Twitter or YouTube and see that whole video, hear that whole response that he has to this question of, you know, how do you feel about losing? And, of course, that's just the press's way of please talk about what just happened. But I love the way, Jason, he puts it in perspective, brother. He says that sports, just like any other job, is not necessarily about winning or losing. You take care of the small things, and then the outcome will take care of itself. In other words, what he's saying is you don't need to get an award. You don't need to get a promotion for you to have a successful year. He tried. He worked his tail off this year to try to get to the highest level, win that NBA championship, but he didn't quite get there. And he's trying to make that crystal clear to the press and the press, the fans, we all want to see our team win. And when they don't, they see it as a failure. He's putting in perspective your thoughts. No, I think it's great. You know, it's a great drop the mic moment for Giannis. Uh, I, I really <laughs> drop enjoy. The mic. I love that. I really like like listen to that. Uh, you know, good for him. You know, yeah. he stayed compo- composed while he spoke. That's right. He didn't get emotional. He right. said, "I don't want to make this personal." Yep. Um, and he was very forthright, very very straight to the point. And, right. uh, and I think he made his point clear. And, and I doubt he'll get that same question next year. You never Hopefully know. Not. I, I, thought, I, I know you did catch that where he says, Eric, I think you asked that same question yeah, last year. That's right. One of the things that when we take a look at Michael Jordan, for instance, and, and you know, he won all those championships, but there was a lot of seasons which he didn't win. Yeah. I'll bet a hundred dollars that people from Chicago and the national press did ask him the same thing when they did lose. Like what, like what happened? Why didn't yeah. you guys win this year? And he was like, Hey, you guys know, we just won the last three years in a row or, <laughs> you know, but, but when you're in the moment, Everybody wants to know how you feel. And I understand where yeah. the press is coming from. But even even if uh, they are be- asking that question just purely out of uh, – because it's their task as sure. a reporter, there's always some truth in what they're asking. Like, this bothers you, right? And, yes, it bothers them. But he puts it in perspective and clearly stating there is more to sport than winning and losing. It's about – actually giving a better effort, trying to figure things out, doing things in a better way. And that's what we do as faithful people, right? Oh, yeah. We, Our spiritual life is probably different than it was five years ago, even a year ago. We keep trying to kind of uh, mold into what God wants us to mold into, and we're going to die trying. At least I know I am, and I can speak for you. I'm sure that you would say the same thing. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, and great words of uh, Rocky Balboa. It's not how many times you can get hit. It's how many times you can get hit and get back up. So, I, you know. One of the great philosophers motivation. of all time, no doubt. That's one of the reasons I have you on this show, brother, to quote <laughs> movies as well as scripture. There you go. Folks, you're listening to Faith and Sport here on Carolina Catholic Radio. It's a co-production of Radio Maria. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. I teach exercise physiology right over there at Wingate University, but... Every couple of weeks, we come in here and we do a little program called Faith in Sport, where we apply our uh, faith to all aspects of sport. So what we do is we pick a lot of stuff that's going on in the world and uh, that either has to do with ethics, character, morality, and then uh, talk about it here. Uh, one of the there's, I think there's a lot of great stories out there, and one of them I want to get to, and what, what I referred to earlier in the program is the stat of the day. Let me give you some numbers. 1,155 games, 1,155 games, 13 years, and that's how long Drew Maggie played in the minor leagues, primarily for the Pittsburgh Pirates, before he was finally called up in the last couple of days. Finally, after 13 years, over 1,000 games as a minor leaguer, got called up, and God bless him, he not only got his first hit, He went a total of two for six, so that means he hit 333. That's one of the highest batting averages in the Hall of Fame. I don't think that's fair to say that to the (laughs) Hall of Famers, but still, he batted six times. He got two hits in those times, and the amazing thing was he was the story of the week, but he, in a way, overshadowed the Pirates, who are doing really well in Major League Baseball, and they were expected not to. I give this guy so much credit for not quitting. I give this guy so much credit for uh, giving his all and then just having that dream come true. The smile on his face when he hit that solid line drive to center field was equal relief, but also pure joy. I felt so good for this guy. And the amazing thing was, is because he's got some age on him. If somebody were to say this is their first base coach, you would believe that, right? Because he's been 30, he's 33 years old. And that face looks like it has spent 13 years in the minor leagues, which is a hard, (laughs) tough life. So Drew, uh, you are our uh, athlete of the week, but that was the stat of the week. And Drew Mag- Maggie, 
and I hope that he gets called up again to go another two for six before he gets set back down to the minors. Uh, another thing I want to talk to you about, I, I thought this was great, and this, is, of course, is mirroring how I feel about the NBA. It's about Phil Jackson, and I heard this because he was – he, he made some comments about the NBA, and I know in part it's because, right? Not in part, but it's probably because he purely loves the NBA. Mm-hmm. It was He played in the NBA several years as a player. He went on to coach the aforementioned uh, Michael Jordan and all those. I think he coached him in every one of those six mm-hmm. NBA championships, and he made a public statement, some form of um, – he was in an interview, actually. And he said, quote, I'm not enjoying the game. That's too bad. There's a whole generation that doesn't like the game. No, I don't watch NBA basketball. I watched the game evolve, and then they went into that lockout year, and, and they did something that was strange. They did that bubble thing down in Orlando, and then paraphrasing the rest of that conversation, he said, I don't like how they got got and made it political mm-hmm. because there was banners, I think even paint on the floor during the pandemic that said uh, Black Lives Matter yeah. and so forth, and that really frustrated him. And that's something that you and I have talked about. That's something that Ed and I have talked about here on this show. Once you make sports political, even if there's a lot of people that agree with you, if it's political or a social construct within our society, that means at least half of the people are not going to like it or not agree with it. And he was ridiculed and and even insulted uh, by some talking heads on ESPN for saying that. Yeah. But I give him credit for saying that because – he has a microphone in front of him in which a lot of people are going to listen, and that's the way a lot of people feel, including the people sitting at this desk right now. Right. And I give him credit for saying it because it took some courage, I think, to say that. Yeah. Your thoughts on the matter? Yeah, I mean, everything's tainted these days, it seems. You know, it's hard to find a uh, sport that's pure. I mean, if, you know, just talking from the politics, but then looking at the sexual issues going on, you know, the – with the the men wanting to pl- you know play in the women's sports oh, yeah, yeah. and transgender and, and issue, the transgender course. stuff going on i mean so it's just like everything's tainted it's just it's it's lost the appeal i mean the sport is like supposed to be that that one you know f- last uh spot out there where we can kind of right. leave politics we can That's leave right. religion we can leave our angst and yeah. we can you know we can go and we can cheer on our teams as as a group and and that's that's uh, that's been that's definitely been divided up. I I haven't watched NBA in you know I can't say I've watched an NBA game in, in several years, um, and and unfortunately uh, this past year and probably the one before with the NFL, yeah, it's kind of done the same thing you know, right. for me as well. It's just not it's not enjoyable when you have to you know be subjected to all this uh, this political garbage that they want to force down. And, and I think th- I think it's starting to vomit itself back up. And, I mean, for, for a man like that, Phil Jackson, being yeah. that involved to come out and say, like, he doesn't even watch it anymore. Yeah. I mean, that man was basketball. He was. He That's what made his career. That's what made him a millionaire, both as a player and as a coach. You're right. For him to say, I don't like it anymore, that's one thing. For him to say, I don't watch it anymore, it's interesting because I would love to see, Jason, the – right uh, – Silver is his name, uh, the head of the NBA, he's the commissioner. When him and his uh, assistants are in the room and somebody comes to him with this or he sees this on his regular feed, whatever, I'd love to know what they actually say. Now, we know what they might put out, Mm. but it'd be interesting to know what they actually say about comments like this because they may say something like, it's just one dude, we don't care. Or do they really care about what people like Phil Jackson think? Because he's just mirroring what other people must think. Yeah. Because he didn't say it with uh, spite. He didn't say it with anger. You could just read his words. You could read the quote online. He's not mad. He's just speaking matter of fact and saying, you're going to ruin sport if you keep doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's always amazing to me that people don't see this as it's happening. I think there are so many times I've said on the show – they just see which way the wind's blowing, and they go in that direction, sure. and then they go, let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like the Bud Light. <laughs> I was about be- to bring that one up. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that was yeah. almost comical in yeah. that some of the people at the top said, we didn't know this was happening. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Mm-mm. is that possible? They knew it was happening. Sure. They, th- that was their way of escaping things when it turned really bad. Yeah. And that was a really good example. You have a product. It's a very successful product. Don't get political. They're stepping into the murkiest waters in our culture right now, the transgender issue. There's nothing more murky than that issue. And they're stepping in it to try to sell beer? Shocker. 
Unbelievable. I just wonder how many, how much outside force is actually involved there. How much, you know, governmental push, you know, threats of additional legislation or you know yeah. restriction yeah. and and taxes and and those type of things that that maybe you know pushed him say hey you're gonna you're gonna push this out and we're gonna yeah. you know you're gonna roll it out but um i think the 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 intent the um the position of phil jackson is probably the position of the majority of people out there um that are that are kind of disgusted with this I, I would think more people uh do you know than than less don't want to hear about Agreed. Political, you know. Have you ever turnout. seen? We're, we're going to go to break here in just a few seconds. But have you ever seen a, a poll or a survey that asked people those questions? Like when when the NBA does this, when the NFL does does this, how do you feel? Do you feel closer to the sport? Do you feel further away from the sport? I've actually mm -hmm. never seen it. I've seen lots of surveys on who watches the sport after that stuff happens, yeah. but that doesn't directly reflect because a lot of people may watch out of anger, right? Sure. They're, or they watch and but they're a little angry. Yeah. We can continue this. Mm -hmm. Folks, listen, coming up right after the break, Paula Umana, a former world-ranked professional tennis player and author of the book, 40 Gifts of Life, Encouragement in Times of Sickness and Suffering. She's going to be a great guest. She has a lot to say about suffering and our faith, and she's coming at it from the viewpoint of a former professional athlete. This is Faith in Sport here in Carolina Catholic Radio and Radio Maria. Stay tuned. We have more right after this. On January 31st, 2019, Carolina Catholic Media signed on Charlotte's first Catholic radio station, AM 1270 WCGC. By the grace of God, we celebrate the past four years and look forward to continuing our apostolic vision and mission to serve the Carolina Catholic community. We are evangelistic partners with our clergy, active parishioners, the fallen away, and the homebound. We are accessible to all Christians, agnostics, and atheists. With distribution of a wide array of content across seven media platforms, there truly is something for everyone. During these past four years, Carolina Catholic has expanded to seven media platforms that include radio, internet stream, mobile app, website, YouTube, social media, and e-newsletter. Nearly all local programs are available by podcast and video on demand. In the year ahead, we're committed to promote more local parish, school, and ministry events, more live broadcasts, and more valuable content that showcases our dynamic local Carolina Catholic community. Of all the Catholic radio stations in the U.S., Carolina Catholic is arguably a leader in locally produced programs. To continue our work, Carolina Catholic Media needs $15,000 in monthly funding to continue operations across our seven media platforms. We are 100% dependent on your generosity. If you love what we're doing, please join us with a monthly tithe or annual gift. We have partnership plans available for parishes, schools, and ministries. If you own a business, you can be a program sponsor on one or all of our platforms. You can do a live broadcast of a special event with promotion before and rebroadcast after. On behalf of everyone at Carolina Catholic Media, we thank you for your past support and look forward to you joining us with the resources the apostolate needs to continue to evangelize the truth of Jesus Christ and our Catholic faith across the Carolinas. May God bless you and your family abundantly. Faith and charity are key elements of life, but are they at the center of your retirement planning and life insurance decisions? Knights of Columbus, a trusted organization with a proud history of more than 140 years of helping its members, can help Catholic families with insurance and retirement planning solutions. Most importantly, we do this in a way that is compatible with Catholic teaching and the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Investment Guidelines. Today, we have expanded our offerings to include retirement annuities, long-term care insurance, and disability income insurance. Beyond the benefits of financial protection, members may take satisfaction in knowing that Knights of Columbus contributes to causes that align with Catholic moral teaching. Let your faith inspire your financial decisions. Terms and conditions apply. Learn more by calling field agent Bob Gordon at 516-551-7838. Hey folks, welcome back to Faith in Sport, wherever, whenever, and however you're joining us. 
We're just glad that you join us today. This is Carolina Catholic Radio, uh, co-production of Radio Maria, Faith and Sport. Where we look at sport through a Catholic lens. Uh, joining me in studio today is the Obligations, Jason Murphy. You can check out Jason's show. Jason, uh, before uh, Paula Umana comes on here, um, we talk about her book and talk about her faith and her life as a professional athlete. Tell us about your show. Um, I know you go in a lot of different directions on your show, but you call it The Obligation. Why? So uh, it was called The Obligation um, essentially because, uh, you know, we all have an obligation, you know, our, not just our, our the, the – the, the laws of the church and yeah. our ob obligations uh, to be at mass and to fast and, and to receive communion and confession, uh, you know, once a, a year or anything like that. But obligation as individuals, um, you know, and obligations to our family, obligations to our children, our, our church community, our, our, our God. Um, and so we wanted to uh, have this show to where, you know, men could, uh, could speak, you know, about things going on in, in the world, things going on in their lives uh, you know, share that, have that camaraderie, have that brotherhood. Uh, we do a lot of interviews, so we hear a lot of conversion and reversion stories. And, um, you know, we talk ch church politics. We, ch you know, talk, uh, you know, things going on in, in our world, you know, sure. just uh, secular politics. And, uh, you know, just struggles, you know, guys that are you know, struggling with things. Uh, you know, just this past week we had uh, Joe Spano. He is a um, – He's a Navy veteran and uh, decided to go back in, and now he's serving the Marines. Just finished boot camp out in Paris Island, so got to hear his story, uh, a great story. Uh, you know, man, really, you know, there's not many out there really, uh, you know, heroic souls like that that uh, yeah. want to continue to serve serve the country, you know, in the direction that it's been going. But there, there, there's you know, good men out there, and so kind of hear about his his walk through the the boot camp, you know, compare and contrast between the Navy and the Marines, and it was uh, kind of providential because this week coming up we have uh, our training for for the men's boot camp for the uh, the Martyrs Walk, and uh, we have two Marines on that walk as That's well. Awesome. So uh, it's gonna ha you know be interesting to to see these guys how they perform uh, in in a little bit different circumstances. So uh, so the obligation uh, we air Fridays at five on the Carolina Catholic Media Network, streaming online and AM twelve seventy. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's a great show. Tune in. Uh, lo always lots of lots of good conversation. Yeah, that's no. right. And if you miss it on Friday, you can also catch it on Saturdays during the Catholic Man Cave lineup on Carolina Catholic Radio, which includes the Obligation, Faith and Sport, the Remnant, the Catholic Man Show. That's right. And uh, a lot of manly yeah, Catholic are, programming. Yeah, there are. <laughs> It'd be interesting to know, but, you know, I'd say half the time I've heard from listeners, especially through Radio Maria, the different uh, cities that were in there, they've been women. Women, mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of women, in fact, my guess is the demographic of Catholic radio in general is more women than men listen. But I would think that yours and, and uh, my program, to an extent, probably talks to men more than it does to women. Sure. But actually, you, I think you mentioned this to me. You actually had a female guest on for the first time well into the recordings of your program, right? I, I've had a couple. Not not many. I mean, just uh, I think maybe two, maybe three, basically hearing their conversion stories, yeah. their reversion stories, uh, and certainly always open for good conversation. But I yeah. uh, thought it was important uh, because they spoke from the position of, of recognizing that men are not leading. and. Yeah. Uh, and when the men are not leading, you see the women kind of step up, and uh, and it's sort of a disorder. Yeah. You know, it's honorable that the women do step up. Tom, if you want a booker for a an event at your parish, uh, something going around in the diocese, you could see that she is a joyful woman. She's an energized woman. She has a lot to say about the truth of our faith. Uh, how about that? She, I, th I think it was the result of the birth of one of her, her mm -hmm. kids, that uh, she got this rare illness and then it left her a quadriplegic and then she regained some motion and so forth in her uh, upper body. But still, she's been wheelchaired uh, pretty much since the beginning. And one of the things that she writes about is how difficult it was not to be able to hold or hold her new baby mm. with a great deal of difficulty. But yeah. she still is remains faithful. And there's a lot to learn from that, right? Because we all suffer. Yeah. There's always these shortcomings that we have in life. And that woman still smiles, and that woman still has faith. So, oh yeah, the joy and suffering. I mean, just you know, you don't hear that much these days, especially one who embraces it. She's leaned into that, and uh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's it a great story. Uh, folks, uh, you're listening to Faith and Sport here on Carolina Catholic Radio, co-production of Radio Maria. In the beginning of the show, I mentioned that we we're going to do Stat of the Day parts one and part two, and we did part one in the first half of the show. Let's do part two, and then Chris will move right into 
Uh, question, uh, quick Q&A with Dr. A. Okay. The stat of the week has to do with Draymond Green. He is a notorious professional <laughs> basketball player. And this guy makes, for every basket he makes and every great game he makes, every great thing he does on the court, uh, he has about three or four negative things that are said about him. This is this sounds untrue, but he has been fined one point three million dollars. He's been suspended three times, six flagrant fouls, and twenty seven technical fouls. And Jason, get get this: this is all just in playoff basketball. <laughs> Not to mention, <laughs> sounds like the, the the new the new age Dennis Rodman or something, man. <laughs> That's actually a good analogy. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah. But this guy's notorious. Did you see where he stepped on the player during the? Yeah. And and his his uh, Carolina guy Steph Curry goes. Well, I'm not sure that was justified. And everybody <laughs> everybody even the biggest fans goes. Well, if he would have done that and that was isolated, he probably just would have got a foul. Sure. But instead, he has this lifelong yeah. bad rap sheet, and the NBA just goes, "You're out." And he I thought it was a blessing for him only to be kicked out for one game. Mm -hmm. But again, the stat is. $1.3 million, three suspensions, six flagrant fouls, and 27 technical fouls just in playoff basketball. How much? Where's... He's the anti Bryce Young. He's the anti Bryce Young. That's yep. right. But we would, we're still going to pray for him. We are gonna we're we're going to ask that he sure. finds God. Brother, we have a couple minutes left still. The quick QA with Dr. A. You have something about a marathoner, right? <laughs> or ultra marathon. Yeah, I had to take a, a double take on uh, this question <laughs> when I first read it. I was like, what? It says, uh, should marathon marathoners be allowed to take a taxi to improve their times? <laughs> I know. That. I figured you'd get a kick out of it. I would not be surprised in this world if that was allowed. Well, I, no, don't say that <laughs> if it or was allowed. Or what about an Uber? Can they Uber? Well, they could, they could do whatever they want. You remember, said taxi. You didn't say Uber. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> they could, remember, they could do whatever they want. It's just like in life, but there are consequences, mm, right? That's true. So this Scottish ultramarathoner, uh, Josiah Zakruski. Uh, she raced a 30 mile plus Remember, uh, marathon is 26.2. Mm. So ultra marathon is generally anything more than that. Mm -hmm. And this gal ran in the, uh, great Britain race from Manchester to Liverpool again, about 31 miles, 31 ish miles. And they had a tracker on her and they found out that in the final minute, she recorded a time of one minute and 40 seconds. <laughs> right. So everybody's <laughs> tracked, right? <laughs> And oh, so they were wow. like, wow, this is a world record, right? To run a wow. one mile. She right? saved Five... it all for the end. She's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She saved it all for the end. Boy, the energy at the end was yeah, impressive, yeah. Jason. You're right. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they. Uh, this is a quote from the administrators uh, of, of the race. The issue has been investigating, having reviewed the data from our racing tracking system, GPX data statements provided from our event team, other competitors, and from the participant herself. <laughs> Um, we can wow. confirm that a runner has now been disqualified from the event, having taken a vehicle transport during part of the route. <laughs> and she's a world-class runner, I'm sure, wow. right? She's great, yeah. In fact, she <laughs> finished third, but she probably went from like 33rd to third. But she literally, I think I think if nobody would have found out, it would have been one of those many things. She's not the first person to do this, by the way. Mm. Other marathoners <laughs> have done this. And, and in the past, people have taken that award and they've walked away. And, of course, before there's tracking systems, yeah. they probably got away with a lot. There was New York City. There was some notorious cases of that, but something where she's tracked and there's other people that are, are going to be witnesses to the crime. I'm amazed that she did it, but it really does show what right. First of all, what ultimate fatigue will do. Right. Mm. It's perhaps uh, a reason, not a good reason, but perhaps a reason why she cheated. Right. She had lack of oxygen going to the brain. She couldn't make a so good you don't decision. Think she had this in the plans. <laughs> They weren't waiting behind the bush. She could have, that brother. <laughs> That's right. The the uh, the grassy knoll. Somebody was. She was waiting this behind right the grassy up, knoll. Right up there with loading the fish with lead weights. I mean, it's right up there with uh, <laughs> in the fishing tournament. I That's mean, right. There's all kinds. No, there's all all kinds of way that people cheat, and there's obviously hormones and other type of um, um, uh, supplements that people can take that are both legal and illegal. That yeah, you remember can use Lance later. Armstrong? Oh well, yeah, blood doping boy. <laughs> uh, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but here's the good thing is that she got caught yeah. and she admitted to it. So there was no argument from her, but shame on her for even thinking about doing this because it's like, it's most likely how our children are, but they're not necessarily sorry, mm -hmm. but they're often sorry that that got caught. Right. Yeah. That that's when yeah. they really express right. a lot. Sure. Of course. But 
but I do believe our kids, and I, th- I think most people, and it's possible. We don't know what's in this gal's heart. She mm-hmm. could be truly, truly remorseful, and hopefully, hoping she never does it again. Uh, but we, of course, hope that nobody takes a page from her book. That was an awful move. Yeah. And the irony was she had run the 31-plus miles. Wow. And she just, for one mile, mm. she took a... I guess she didn't Uber. figure the GPS would track her speed. And she figured <laughs> just the location. No, you're right. You're right, because yeah. she could say, well, I was just running along that route. But th- that's what the GPS system does, right? It can ultimately monitor the speed. Mm. Amazing. Um, <laughs> brother, there's one more thing I want to talk about before we go, and that is a suburb of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, has done something that we've actually talked about on this show but it's been a while since we talked about it, and that is should parents be forced to or have the obligation to umpire or referee a Little League game due to their own actions? So in Deptford Township, a suburb of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, they've created an innovative new solution to combat the trend of parents arguing with umpires. So what they said was, you're not allowed to come to the complex until you've completed three umpire assignments. Once you do that, then we'll let you come back, said the president of this little league. Mm. Your initial thoughts. What, like, what do you think when you hear this? Good, bad? I don't know. What's ringing in my ears right now is, in, in the words of Je- Jeff Foxworthy, you can't fix stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't know. I don't know if that's going to help. I mean, I imagine it may in some capacity. It may just dissuade others from – acting the fool out there on a little league field. But, uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, I think that's a, that's an okay, uh, punishment there to, to put him through. I, I don't know if it's necessarily going to cure it. Going to work. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, sure. Throw it out there. See if it'll stick. I, I don't, uh, I think they have very little to kind of fall back on. Yeah. So ultimately I, I'm where you're, where you're at. I don't think it's going to work it, or it's say, I'm not sure it's going to work, mm-hmm. but I do like the fact they're trying something. And one of the things they said, if you read about the story, is they're not going to be the home plate umpire. That would ruin the game, right? If they have no training or if they don't <laughs> yeah. have good eyesight. Yeah. But if they are in the outfield, for instance, calling whether the ball's fair or foul, mm-hmm. and they can be overruled by the home plate umpire, sure. for instance, they're not going to ruin the game. But it might humble them, brother. Yeah. Because this is a huge issue. Mm-hmm. People berating, even as adults. And one of the things oh, yeah. that uh, um, I've talked about before is children, especially the children of that parent, will mimic oh, yeah. the parent. So if the parent yells at the coach, if the parent is negative to the umpire, they feel like they have permission cycle. to do that. Yeah. yeah, it's awful. So we want to stop that cycle. Mm. So ultimately, I like this. It'll be really interesting to see, brother, yeah. how tuned. this turns out. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> All right, folks, listen, as always, we end with a quote. I have a new one this time. This comes from St. John Paul II. He said, when sports are played and understood in the right way, They are an extraordinary expression of a person's best inner energies and of his ability to overcome the difficulties of competition. Before we go, special thank you, brother, uh, to Jason Murphy, Paula Umana, everything you do, Chris, for this show, um, and and always that you guys were part of the show today. I'm Dr. John Aquaviva. Please join us next time here on Carolina Catholic Radio and Radio Maria for more faith and sport. St. Sebastian, pray 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 for for us. us. You've been listening to Faith and Sport on Carolina Catholic Radio, Charlotte, 1270 AM. Also streaming at carolinacatholicmedia.org and on the Carolina Catholic mobile app. We want to invite you to tune in again next time for another edition of Faith and Sport right here on Carolina Catholic Radio and also Radio Maria. We want to thank our Radio Maria listeners for tuning in to this edition of Faith and Sport as well. And next time you visit Carolina Catholic Media org or the Carolina Catholic mobile app. Hit that Donate Now button to help keep great Catholic radio programming on the air.